families have got into a great deal of trouble because of the presence of their men at the atomic test, because of children with deformities and grandchildren with deformities. Children who were born physically and mentally deformed and who themselves have children who are physically and mentally deformed. One grandson who developed teeth on only one side of his head. This is not new to us. Now, the only thing that ever happened to these people, the only sort of exciting thing, for want of a better word, that ever happened to these people was that they went to the atomic tests. The recent Clark report has recommended to the government that our service be declared non-warlike hazardous service, which brings us then under the entitlements of the Veterans Entitlement Act. The government has declined to pay any sorts of compensation. We have a legacy of real trouble in this country because of those British atomic tests. If there is a strong wind comes up, remember the big dust storm in Melbourne some years ago that was, looked so dramatic on the television. If you're in one of those, then there is a very good chance that you may inhale one of these radioactive particles. And this can go on for years and years and years. In the late 1990s, the federal government spent $104 million of public money cleaning up parts of the Maralinga area. $104 million of taxpayers' money and the area is still not clean. The indigenous people of that area can only traverse it. They cannot set up anything that even looked like a permanent base. There are large areas of it still wired off into which they cannot go. The government has maintained this policy of no hazard. There was no hazard. How could they maintain such a policy when in the late 1990s they spent $104 million cleaning up an area and the clean-up failed? But if there was no hazard, why was there a necessity to clean up at all? would appear now that they've been using uh, beryllium as far back as, uh, in the atomic test, as far back as, as probably the second test, which means that you know, the, the second test was, I think, was Marku, the, the one on the ground. If that's the case, that's the reason why poor old uh, Charlie Melopati died. He died of pneumonia. Who's, who's ever heard of a, a tribal Aboriginal dying of pneumonia? I mean, they sleep out in, <laughs> they sleep out in the freezing cold every night, for God's sake. In 1953 onwards, they used beryllium. And I know now, now because it's in front of me and it's a confidential uh, file from out of Canberra, I now know that they use it right through to 1964 in the test, in, the, in these so called minor trials. The minor trials, uh, as I said, there was over 600 of them, all used beryllium. What happened after 63? I don't know. But while I was in the Army, there was Army, Navy, and Air Force at Merrillinga they would have been affected by beryllium. Point, there's 12,000 people involved here. 12,000 went through Maolinga who worked there uh, from 55 onwards, and, and there was about 1,000 or so who worked at EMU in 53. 53. The Vixen B trials, again, they used the toxic radioactive material were uranium, plutonium, and beryllium. Now, these are government documents which are now declassified. They were in those days confidential. Now it's come out now, but it's only come out because somebody has got it out. It was never going to be made public. Right? They're never going to say to someone, this is, this is what, they, what could cause you trouble, old son. Nobody was warned about them being any, any worry to us, our, our health. Nobody was told anything about not to go anywhere in the, uh, in the, in the range. Ninety percent of the fellows who went to Melbourne didn't serve overseas. And they're not covered by anyone. Not covered by anyone. People who were there before the Tommy bomb, and they were mainly civilians, and they're, they're all, a lot of them are dead, and, and their widows and their daughters are trying to fight for some sort of claim. They just said, go away. There's nothing, nothing to claim about. We didn't do Tommy tests until late in 56. People out there have got nothing. They're just old age pensioners 
And, uh, you know, I mean, they they gave their, done the right thing. They went and, you know, and done the thing for their country. And uh, nobody wants them. The same thing now in, you know, overseas. But uh, there's votes to be won in good soldiers coming back wounded. But there's no votes to be won in dead soldiers coming back in coffins. Unless you stand up to these characters, you lay down and die, well, these things will just go away. The school kids will say, oh, what trials, for God's sake. They were explosions. They, they went off like... Uh, miniature bombs and the dust went up in the air yeah and then whatever the way the wind was blowing carries the dust it's bull dust i mean it's like it's it's as light as what uh, pepper pepper is and it would just sometimes it would blow over your face and not only that there was dust storms at maralinga in whirly girl whirly yeah, gigs we call them those days would pick up dust anywhere and just blow it all over you that they that this stuff is all over australia no i mean it might have been used earlier if it was used at monte bello well, then it's true that every part of Australia was, was yeah, under Monty Bella covered the whole of Australia. Picked up and taken with the cloud and uh, dumped anywhere. Queensland got most of it. Adelaide got the most of the original test. The second test, 57, was Queensland's turn. I, I, I'm anti war now. I mean, I've been through it. Yeah, what the hell do you prove? Yeah, once these things are over, they're for, you're forgotten. You just say, well, who's next? Yeah. These people, yeah, as I said, they, they will fight you to the death to pay you that one cent. And uh, yeah, and when, when when you've got it, they want to uh, yeah. <laughs> but as I said, I've I've been through it, and I'm I'm completely anti-war. Yeah, and these people that are pro-war, they should have they should at least go over there and see what's going on. If you go along to say these things to anyone, and especially the Royal Commission or these court cases, they don't believe you. We want people to come forward with education, uh, or people with education or rank, to say these things. I would hate to think these things are intentional, but if these things happen to you, and they bring them out 50 years afterwards. Someone's got to be has got to find out why the hell it wasn't done originally, and why it wasn't part of the Royal Commission.